Oh, that's great. Rugrats is getting another reboot. Maybe it's finally time to tackle Angelica and Susie's preschool days to show how bad of an idea this is. All right, let's find the episode. I don't remember their names. So let's just type in something here or any attributes I can think of about it. Uh, Google and type in unnecessary spinoff for a show that's been going on for far too long from a franchise that should really die off because they've already done everything possible with it and most likely don't have any ideas left. On second thought, this is more important. Yay, I'm, I'm finally doing something from Total Drama. Since near the beginning, people have been requesting me to do a review from the Total Drama series. And I always said no, because the show goes against my style in a variety of ways. The Total Drama series was one of the few Western cartoons that told an ongoing narrative, and reviewing one random episode from it would be like reviewing one chapter out of a book. On top of that, a lot of what I criticized things for worked on the Total Drama series. Like, a lot of people selected specific episodes where a character did something awful, like in one episode Harold fills a ballot box and gets another member of the show Courtney kicked off. These characters largely were not portrayed as the best kind of people, and they were all desperate to win a cash prize. Many of the episodes had a fair share of gross out, but considering it was trying to ape reality television, which has a lot of shows like Fear Factor, it felt in place. So I just never really felt interested in reviewing a Total Drama episode, it just didn't feel right. And eventually I, I fell out of the series altogether and tried to forget about it. My opinion on the franchise as a whole, I watched the first three seasons. And the first one was really the only one that had any magic to me. The second season felt like a very bare-bones rehash. And the third one was actually surprisingly okay, despite it being a musical season for no real reason at all. Like, not even an in-universe. Chris, the host, just wants everyone to burst into song at one random point in the episode because... Because. A lot of the reason that I did watch and like the original season was because I really liked Survivor-type shows, and most people seemed to back in that era. So the concept was intriguing. And oh yeah, Cartoon Network was so bad at making cartoons in the late 2000s that the only good things on the network was imported from another country. I stand by the first season of Total Drama being good, even to this day. However, despite me liking it, I am really surprised that it went on for more than two seasons. I'm exceptionally surprised that it's still going on over a decade later. I mean, look at all of this. Total Drama Island, Total Drama Action, Total Drama World Tour, Revenge of the Island, Redonkulous Race, which is apparently a spin-off and not a main season for some reason. It's just fucking insane. And for what? If there was any franchise past its shelf life, it would be the Total Drama series. Much of that is because, well, it was never meant to have much of a shelf life to begin with. Here's how the show would work back in its inception. Over 20 teen stereotypes would come to a summer camp island and compete to win a million dollars. And the show would parody many trappings of your typical reality television show. Chris, the host, was a jackass who didn't care about any of the contestants and would make up stupid rules on the spot. At the end of each episode, the losing team would vote off one of their team members. Now, shows like Survivor, which Total Drama Island parodied, they have their longevity because they're able to bring in a new cast with new personalities every single season, to the point where bringing back previous contestants was always a surprise special season. Total Drama did not have that luxury. For one, it takes actual work to come up with new characters for an anime series. If you want to find a contestant for a reality television series, just hold additions. But secondly, it wasn't really a criticism when I said that the characters on the show were teen stereotypes. They were teen stereotypes by design. Every single one of them were designed to be the embodiment of said stereotype. So, if a second season of Total Drama brought forth another delinquent stereotype, that character would act a bit too much like Duncan. If they brought forth another fat kid stereotype, he'd act a bit like Owen. I mean, they could have picked new stereotypes, but the first season had over 20 of them, so you'd be plunging the bottom of the barrel very quickly. They could abandon the stereotype thing altogether, but once again, that takes hard work, and it kind of takes away from some of what makes Total Drama Island unique. In the end, in the second season, they didn't add any new characters at all. In the third season, though, they added two new characters, and immediately ran into the problems of their concept, with Alejandro just being another Heather. Heather 2.0. And finally, in like the fourth or fifth or whatever season, they finally did add a whole host of new characters. And they hit both problems. 
These new characters were either like people we've seen before, or their concepts were so off the wall that it really felt like jumping the shark. If my research is correct, one of the seasons actually went with the evil twin trope. In my mind, Total Trauma became one of those shows like Ben 10 or The Simpsons or The Fairly Odd Parents. Just something that's always on, but nobody knows why it's on anymore because it hasn't had any intrigue or relevance for years. The only interesting thing about any of these shows is that there are enough people still watching them for the channel to justify airing them. So I tended to just forget the Total Drama still existed. But then they made this, and I lost that luxury. What even is this? This is Total Drama Rama, or at least the first episode of it. Something released early on the Cartoon Network app, like an air raid siren, or a warning shot to let you know that shit's going down. Total Drama Rama is a baby spin-off, one with a stupid title that makes no sense. Yeah, you remember baby spin-offs, don't you? They were very popular back in the 90s, where people would take franchises, some of which hadn't been relevant for years and years, and then they make all of the characters little kids or even babies and cut off any edge, telling the same cookie-cutter stories that you'd seen any other baby spin-offs. We all collectively decided that this genre of show was a horrible idea that badly watered down the original property. For example, you go from Looney Tunes to Baby Looney Tunes where these once funny cartoons are all learning lessons about friendship and a daycare because why not? I mean, there is a right way to do a baby spinoff. I mean, I can only think of like two examples off the top of my head, and one of them is Tiny Toons Adventures, which I don't think counts. The other one is a pup named Scooby-Doo. It was able to keep the overall themes and energy of the original, but still put a new spin on the formula. And honestly, it became one of my favorite Scooby-Doo incarnations. But that's like, the exception to the rule. Every other baby spin-off is just pure fucking garbage. But besides baby spin-offs in general being declared a bad idea in the 90s, let me explain why Total Drama Rama is a very bad idea. Total Drama Island was based on reality TV shows, a genre not really known to appeal to a very young audience, one who might want to watch a baby spinoff, the only group of people who would want to watch a baby spinoff. Total Drama Island, there were characters who did awful things to each other, censored nudity, mild swearing, tons of gross out. This is the show you're really going to retool for a baby's show. May I ask why? Yes, I get that you haven't had any ideas for Total Drama in over a decade at this point. Once again, I ask, why is this the franchise that you want to retool as a baby show? You know what? Maybe it's like a parody or something. Maybe they want to do for baby shows what they did for reality TV. Not entirely sure why, since this genre hasn't been relevant in over two decades, but what the hell? What does the theme song say? <laughs> The theme song says that we don't give a fuck and we want to assault your ears. Good to know. Oh god, why is the theme song still going? The episode is starting! Please tell me we won't be hearing this throughout the entire damn episode. So the episode starts with Owen running in talking about how he won a prize at a crane game. Everyone is super excited and then... I like the way it challenges my gross motor development. Okay, what the hell? A confession cam? Okay, so yes, the Total Drama series used the confession cam throughout every other installment. But that's because the confession cam was a convention of actual reality TV shows. Reality TV shows have confession cams, and so a parody of reality TV has confession cams. You know, in an outhouse. But this isn't a parody of a reality show. At best, it's a parody of a baby's cartoon. And baby's cartoons don't have confession cams. If you want to keep it as a mainstay of the franchise, you need to explain why there's a confession cam in this show. Off the top of my head, I don't know, since they're all toddlers, maybe they tell their secrets to a giant teddy bear that Chef put a camera in. I mean, dedicate yourself to the idea. Last year alone, there were 43 crane-related deaths. Wait, that's Gwen? Like, what the hell? I mean, she was uh, technically the goth stereotype, but beyond appearances, she never really acted all doom and gloom, and uh, many times she could be quite cheerful. All of the other characters in Total Drama Rama act like their teen self for the most part, but why change her up so thoroughly when she's not even really a main character in the episode? And on top of that, why change her to be even more cliché? Gwen was one of the few characters who broke out of their stereotype, and you're throwing her back in even harsher without an explanation. Why? Especially when Lucy from Loud House does this even better. We then learn that Chef confiscates toys from home, and Owen has a dilemma that takes far too long because we need to throw in confession cams, reiterating what we can plainly see, or what we already know about these characters. So one bounces the ball, and then Chef catches it. Okay, why is Chef the daycare owner? Chris is the host of the Total Drama series. Wouldn't he be the daycare owner, and Chef would be, you know, the chef? 
And yes, I, I know that Chris would be absolute shit at running a daycare, but so would Chef. The joke here is that they made someone who should never be a daycare owner a daycare owner, and Chris would probably be the better punchline in that role. Actually, in running the daycare, Chef is at the very least semi-competent, which seems like an insult to his character, too. What's the point in using the exact same characters if you're going to change these characters? This is just confusing. Chef tosses the ball into the safe that has a mountain of toys. I hope you learned something from this. Respect for other people's property is totally optional. So then Slapstick happens and Izzy makes some expressions that are there to remind you that even though this franchise is over a decade old, they're not going to spend a cent to upgrade the animation budget. Also, one thing that really bugs me, why is Duncan's voice so different from his teenage self? I mean, yes, I know puberty and all that, but Owen's voice is largely unchanged. Noah seems like a little bit pitched up, but Duncan's isn't anything close to his uh, teenage self. Not helping is that it really doesn't fit. It sounds like a pitched up Johnny Tess. Um, what about the rectal scan? <sighs> For the last time, Jude. <laughs> wait, wait, Jude. Okay, this is one of the more confusing moves. Jude is a character imported from another Cartoon Network show uh, that they imported from Teletoon named 16. And I don't know why. Doesn't Total Drama have enough characters? You needed to pull a character from another show. Is this supposed to connect their universes together for some arbitrary reason? I, I mean, like, like, why? I I'm, I'm, I'm seriously curious. I, I don't understand any of these creative decisions. I mean, because including a character from 16 here seemed like such a baffling decision, I originally thought that character was Ezekiel. All you really had to do was change the hair color and then BAM, I'd believe it. Oh my god, that insane chanting is the background music. Okay, it is not bad enough that you have an ass theme that sounds like ass shitting out pixie sticks. Why do these background songs have to be off-key childish chanting? Yes, I, I get daycare. Why do you want to show the worst parts of it? I mean, it goes away soon enough, but let's say it strikes me as the wrong choice to use it at all. Finally, the kids break into the safe, and then everyone is playing with all the confiscated toys, while Duncan escapes. Finally, Chef wakes up and comes across Noah, and only Noah, in a daycare of over 20 kids, when only like six of them are doing this break-in thing. Then Chef goes on about insulting a three-year-old, and it's mildly amusing, I guess. I, I don't know, I felt like I've seen this kind of gag before. Um, we, we are, uh... We are, uh, playing, playing a game. Nice. What are y'all playing? Marbles. No, not, not face marbles. Ha, um, ha, hide and seek. But it is so hard. Yeah, they're best hiders on earth. Oh, don't be so hard on yourself, Noah. You're bad at lots of things. <laughs> uh, wait now, I, I didn't mean it like that. I know. Let's make a list. We'll put a gold star for all the things you're good at and a sad cat sticker for what you're bad at. Hmm, things you're good at. Uh, let's start with things you're bad at. That'll be easier. <sighs> and I mean, it, it just shows how tame this spin-off is going to be forced to be. Like, in the original Total Drama Island, the characters were put through immense mental and physical abuse. Here, all, all Chef can do is innocently insult the characters. That's it. So, for a reason I can't explain, the other kids are in the vents looking for Duncan. And suddenly, I'm more lost than they are. Why Duncan would want to break out, I get that. He's a delinquent character. But I have no idea why the other kids want to stop him. Like, if he gets out, it doesn't affect any of them. Courtney, sure, I, I can understand her wanting to stop Duncan. She's about rules and order. But all the other characters, not a single clue. Like, I know who these characters are, I know their personality, and I have no idea why they would want to stop Duncan. If he gets out, uh, so what? They get picked on less. And, and that's not even mentioning what any new viewers think who don't know any of these characters. Chef keeps insulting Noah, and now he's crying. Isn't that what we all wanted? Total drama with less drama and more crying. Meanwhile, Owen smells pizza. And then everyone falls out of the vent because I don't give a shit. Then the ball bounces and breaks everything and the episode ends. I still don't know what the hell this is, even though I just watched it. Most people seem to assume that this is like a parody of a baby spinoff, and that's what my expectations were going in, but there's like no commentary. There's no gags about it being a baby spinoff. When you're doing a parody, you need to change up the context of the cliches, 
or else you end up playing them straight. And to tell you the truth, this is as boring as any other baby spinoff. E except even worse, I guess. These are character archetypes that I've seen a million times before. I mean, give Baby Looney Tunes some credit. At least Bugs, Daffy, and the gang, they all had unique personalities. In this one we got what? The orderly tattletale? The kid who gets into trouble? The wild child? The fat kid who falls a lot? You can get away with these kind of characters and stereotypes when the scenario of the show is interesting. I mean, I had never seen these teen stereotypes in a survivor setting before. When you take those exact same character types and throw them in a daycare, well, it's characters that I've seen before in a place that I've seen before. Also, why the fuck is Jude in this?